right there. Oh, thanks. Going to go in this order, right? Okay. Okay. Hey, the microphones are on. Everybody ready? Saying <laughs> so he's got to have his toys by hand. Good morning. I'm so glad you could all join us here today. It's a kind of a celebration of sorts. My name is Dr. Lee Neumeyer, and I'm currently the chair of the Department of Surgery here at the University of Arizona and Banner University Medical Center, Tucson. That's for about another week or so when I then assume uh, the role of interim vice president for health sciences. So I couldn't be happier to be here today to talk about this amazing team and community success, and it's really a team in every aspect of that word. I want to talk, I'm glad to welcome you here to talk about a brave young man who experienced a very near miss last November 19th, and the wonderful collaboration by many people in this city to get him so that he's here today with us, and actually sitting up and able to talk to us. We're here to acknowledge the bystanders who perform CPR so effectively and so long, and the quick thinking of our colleagues at St. Mary's Hospital. We'll also speak to some of the advanced technology and expertise that this, our university academic medical center has offered. We'll have short statements from several people this morning, followed by a time for questions and answers. So let's start with the biggest hero himself, Craig Cunningham, the reason we're all here today. So Craig? Uh, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, I'm just going to keep it short and sweet. Uh, I want to thank everyone um, from the fire department to our trainers, um, to the doctors at St. Mary's, to the doctors at Banner, to every single nurse that, uh, that has helped me so far. Um, if I could uh, actually use some names uh, from St. Mary's, Dr. George and Dr. Reza, and from Banner Hospital, Dr. Kelpie, Dr. Hughes, and Dr. Yankas. Um, without those five people, our trainer, Devin, and uh, the fire department, I don't think I'd be here today. So thank you. Next, uh, we have a very honored guest. We have Craig's mom, Heather Cunningham. Firstly, I'd like to thank the media for calling this press conference and giving me the opportunity to stumble through a failed attempt at expressing how grateful I am to the medical staff at Banner University Hospital. I don't think I will ever find the words to express how grateful I really am. Craig not, would not be here with us today if these people had not gone that extra mile, every aspect of this situation. The only reason he survived the original incident was the continued refusal to give up in a seemingly hopeless situation on behalf of the trainers, the emergency responders, doctors and nurses. The rest of the recovery is followed the same story. The doctors and nurses have monitored him meticulously and caught on oncoming problems in their early stages. They have made difficult decisions without hesitating and acted effectively under extreme pressure when they were caught between a rock and a hard place. They have run out of, they have run out of options and had to create new options by pushing the boundaries of things that they have tried and implemented before. Most of all, they have refused to give up in spite of hopelessness. They have given Craig a chance to recover that continues to exceed anything that could ever have been expected. These people are nothing short of a gift to mankind. And I will remember the gift that they have given me every time I look at my son. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. No 
Next, we have, uh, as he was aptly called, Dr. Rez Mohavid from uh, St. Mary's. There were uh, so many people involved in this, and I wish we could have time for all of them to come up and speak. But the never give up, the never settle, to keep going is uh, our colleagues at, uh, in the fire department, the trainers and things at the team, and Dr. Mohavid and his colleagues were just like, uh, just didn't give up. So Dr. Mohavid. Hello, thank you all for being here. I'm Dr. Reza Movahed, Regional Cardiology Director of Caremore, Professor of Medicine at the University of Arizona and attending cardiologist at St. Mary's Hospital. Today is a very special day to stand next to Craig Cunningham, who survived a terrifying incident before the Roadrunners hockey game, a night that we will all remember. That night when he collapsed, the first responders and scene jumped in and immediately started chest compression only CPR before he arrived at the St. Mary's Hospital emergency room. His condition at that time was very critical and he was fighting intensely for his life. The dedicated team at St. Mary's Hospital emergency room, including Dr. Campbell, the attending physician in the ER, continued life-saving measures to the fullest extent possible. When I arrived, we immediately took him to the cardiac catheterization lab at the Carondelet Heart and Vascular Institute at St. Mary's Hospital with the assistance of our pulmonologist, Dr. Toiber, and our hospitalist, Dr. Halaftis, we worked tirelessly to attempt to establish his vital signs and oxygenation, but his condition continued to, to decline. In order to save his life, we determined to put him in an external heart and lung machine called ECMO. At that time, I reached out to my great friend and cardiothoracic surgeon at Banner, Dr. Kalpi, and requested his assistant at the hospital and that he bring the life-saving equipment with him. He engaged his team immediately. Both leadership teams at St. Mary's Hospital and Banner University Medical Center worked together diligently to coordinate logistics. At the same time, the team and the ground at St. Mary's, including physicians, nursing, staff, cat lab, personnel, and pharmacy department did an equally wonderful job providing Craig with all means to keep him alive until the life-saving ECMO machine arrived. This coordination between teams helped to ensure that Dr. Kalpi and his team arrived just on time and stabilized him enough to be transferred to Banner University Medical Center for continuing care. At the Banner UMC, the great teamwork continued providing extraordinary care, ultimately saving his life and supporting his recovery so that he can walk out of this hospital. This case elaborates first the great effectiveness of chest compression only CPR that advocated for at the University of Arizona as the first line therapy for witness cardiac arrest victims. It also exemplifies the great teamwork and collaboration across community hospitals and physicians that allowed for extraordinary care and life saving measures to allow Craig to recover and work his way back to the ice. This collegiality and collaboration between groups should be a model across the city and the country. I cannot thank enough all of the associates, personnel, and physicians at both St. Mary's Hospital and Banner University Medical Center for the great care and the, they provided not only to Craig, but their ongoing commitment to the health of our community. On behalf of Caremore and St. Mary's Hospital, I wish Craig all the best in his continued recovery and look forward to seeing him back in the ice soon. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Dr. Mohavid. And when people ask what they can do to help, I think there's two important things you can do to help. Number one is learn CPR, and number two is give blood. Next, we're going to hear from Dr. Zane Kalpi. And Dr. Kalpi is the person who put uh, Craig on ECMO and then uh, took care of him for the last uh, month. Dr. Kalpi? Well, morning. It's a, it certainly is a privilege to be here, but at the same time, in every sense of the word, it's a privilege to be here because he's here. And, um, you know, there's only two things really to say uh, that stand out in my mind. Um, the first thing is we have a marquee program called uh, Moby Program over here, which is the reason why we could go and pick Craig up and actually do what we needed to do um, compassionately along with, uh, with mom and the family. But also at the same time, you know, our, our nurses and um, 
Josh Mailer and Jared Mosier uh, and Toshi Kazui have been uh, outstanding in terms of running this program with Richard Smith. I think, you know, one can't forget what happened on the ice. So Devon and Matt were amazing. And I think that the fire, um, uh, the, the Tucson Fire Brigade was phenomenally there and in action. Uh, and I think that uh, the Southwest Ambulance, too, was quite amazing in terms of how fast everything happened. And, uh, you know, the, the, the two nurses on that night, Janelle and Chris, who are here today, I, I think um, humbled me by just making things happen. And, and that was really cool because then Matt, and, Matt McReynolds and I could just run and go and, and, and get uh, uh, Craig. And I think that whole thing, walking on literally as George and Reza created a red carpet for us to walk into the ICU, we were able to really put Craig on um, fairly quickly and get him off a lot of the blood pressure medication and, and, and bring him home to where we are. And that didn't take long. And we had you know, such wonderful administrative support. It was so smooth. And uh, we have multidisciplinary teams here. One of the, the second thing that stands out in my mind as to why I think we are the um, providers for the community is that we can provide really a safe level of technology to things that sometimes don't work or we can push the envelope. And one of the things that we did was, Craig was one of the first few, um, where we decided to... Um, ultrasound his heart and his heart really wasn't beating the first two days and if you remember we looked at the echoes together with you and Serena and it was really tough you know we didn't know where we were going to go but we one, one thing that was clear was that we had to decompress his heart and I think doing that with um, this cannula uh, over here and using it in a novel way to fully decompress his heart to allow function to happen his heart started literally soon after we did that and was only in for five days and uh, his heart's had full recovery. So the key message in the take home there is, is recovery and, and heart recovery and what we can do with the tools in our toolkit. And we've got a lot of tools here, as you know, from many of the stories you've written in, and reported in the past. So I can only say that um, if it wasn't for Craig and his colleagues who um, are here supporting all of this and really the multidisciplinary people that are over here it really means a lot and I just wanted to say thank you and that it was a privilege and I'll never forget that uh, Next we have uh, Doug Sodart who is the Tucson Roadrunners General Manager Hello, um, on behalf of the Arizona Coyotes and the Tucson Roadrunners Organization I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody involved in this, uh, this uh, uh, incident that occurred. Um, we're, in the, we're in the hockey industry, and it's about teamwork and commitment and working hard to achieve a goal. And I can tell you, being a little bit on the inside here from day one, um, I've never seen anything like this in my life with regards to the teamwork that the doctors at two hospitals have worked together to save a young man's life. So it's been an incredible venture, adventure I should say, and uh, uh, we're really, really happy to see uh, Craig sitting at the end of the table down there and he's got a full life ahead of him. So uh, all we can do is uh, wish him the best and want to thank everybody for their commitment and their, uh, to uh, saving his life. So thank you so much. Okay. We have uh, some time for questions. Uh, we're not going to let Craig tire out too much because you might imagine after all he's been through, being up and around for even short times can be quite tiring. But I think we have a few minutes for questions. So, Craig, can you describe how you're feeling? What's, what's your day-to-day -day feelings and, and how's it going right now? Um... I think some days are good, some days are bad, you know, it's more for me right now, just kind of mental. I've been in here for so long, it's, you know, you look up at the roof every day and it's the same roof and um, it's, uh, the, the nurse have been pretty good in taking me outside and, you know, giving me an hour outside a day and it's, 
it's made a huge difference, but it's been uh, it's been a pretty big grind, you know, just being in the same spot the whole time and um, you know, same looking at the same thing every day. Yeah, it means a lot, obviously. Uh, she was down here um, watching me when it happened. So she's been here since day one and, um, you know, my whole life. She's uh, She's been the backbone of our whole family and, you know, nothing's changed now. She's still there for me every single day and um, I couldn't be more thankful. No, I don't remember uh, anything from that whole day, actually. The last thing I remember is playing uh, the weekend before. There's been a tremendous outpouring of support from the hockey community internationally for you. How does that make you feel? Yeah, I mean, it feels good, obviously. Um, Any time that you can get some extra support and some extra help from other people, it, it makes a big difference. And um, it's nice to know that people are... Uh, are reaching out and, and able to, to help you through tough times. What about that response from the Tucson community? I mean, this is how I can do it all now. Yeah, it's been, it's been unbelievable. Um, you know, I can't say enough about the nurses and doctors around here, um, just the people of the, the city of Tucson. I've been getting cards and stuff in the mail from people that I don't, want to, I don't even know, you know, so it's been, uh, you know, it's meant a lot to me and um, I think that, uh, you know, Tucson's a great city, and I wish that I could have uh, enjoyed it a little bit more than I did. How are you feeling about your future hockey career? Uh, <laughs> uh, as of right now, I think that I'm probably done. But we'll see when I get back from rehab, how it goes. But as of right now, and, you know, I'm, well, at the level that I was playing at, you know, I don't know if I'll ever get back to playing pro, but I don't know. Anything can happen. For Dr. Colby, if I'm, I'll if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, but uh, we know that Craig went into cardiac arrest. Do we know why? Well, he um, went into ventricular fibrillation, uh, which causes heart to stop, uh, and the CPR needed to commence. So um, there's a lot of reasons for it. Uh, we still don't know. And what we're doing is we're band-aiding that by trying to investigate further. And it's going to take a little while for us to, f to get down to this. But um, together, we're going to work on trying to make sure that we do that. But we're also going to treat him with having a defibrillator. Have you ever experienced anything like this in your medical career? V ventricular fibrillation or...? <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, the, the, the most amazing thing was the glue that bound us and, uh, you know, across from St. Mary's, from the floor, from the ice, right to, to where we are right now. So that, that is the, I think all of us have the humility to say that was amazing. Again, depending on his recovery, I mean, it's way too soon to say that. But I think definitely he's probably going to get better. He's a strong man, and he has recovered, I mean, greatly. So I think he probably will be able to do uh, some, some of his hobbies. How far he can be professionally, it's depend how he recovers. But it's too early to say. Just very quickly, one thing that epitomizes everything. When I first spoke to him, when he started getting round to it off the ventilator and everything, you know, I said, you're going to have a tough time. He understood, and he said, bring it on. <laughs> so I think that, that epitomizes who he is. So he's ready for anything. Um, just before we, um, we kind of depart from here, uh, this apparently is a hockey stick. <laughs> and you have been inspiring. Uh, you've inspired a lot of people here. Um, you've brought us really together. You, both your mom, you, your family, uh, and your brothers. 
and um, your whole story. And so from us, we wanted to say thank you from our hearts um, about what this meant and how we feel about you and how you've got to keep going on. Okay, so uh, I agree. Um, Craig, you have inspired so many people. The people who've come to talk to you uh, are totally inspired by not only your uh, perseverance, your uh, willingness to bring it on and power through all this, and uh, just your hope for the future. And I think we all have learned a lot from you, so I really appreciate that. I appreciate everybody being here, but I think we'll uh, conclude now. And um, thank you so much.